Hello and welcome to the Knife and Fork Show. I'm Jason Huffman, the Editor-in-Chief of Food Chemical News. Every week, my staff of talented reporters and I go digging all around Washington, D.C. and sometimes other parts of the country or globe to find out what is going on in this crazy world of food policy and regulation. We always find a few things worth writing about in our online and print publications. Now we've created this program to talk about it. And guess what? This is the very first episode. So welcome aboard on our maiden voyage. Forever how long we can keep ourselves from getting kicked out of the studio, it will be our ambition and our pleasure to let you hear directly from some of our best sources and the most influential or interesting personalities in food regulation. And for our first few segments, I thought I'd introduce you to a few of the personalities that work right next to me, our star journalists, and let them give you a quick account of the exciting doings in food regulation that they are currently monitoring today. So today, to kick things off, I've asked Amber Healy, our secret weapon on the staff, to join us in the studio. Amber was my first hire four years ago after taking over at Food Chemical News, and I remain extremely happy about that today. But I'm probably working her too hard because she's covering meat inspections, food additives, nutrition and obesity, and what else are you covering? Anything else that's thrown on my desk. <laughs> ah. um, well, the first thing I want to talk to you about is this, this thing that's going on up in New York. Uh, with Mayor Bloomberg. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, what Mayor Bloomberg is trying to do is get you to not be able to drink that. Why? He's, tr he's trying to institute a ban on beverages sold in uh, containers larger than 16 ounces, which would be about half that size, in um, any of all of the city's 24,000 restaurants, 5,000 food carts, um, delis, um, any establishment of that nature. There are certain exem exemptions for this rule, um, water, dairy-based beverages, 100% um, fruit juice, those would all be fine in whatever size you choose to buy them in. Grocery stores would also be exempted. You could still go and buy a two liter of whatever you feel like drinking. This seems like an attack on my freedom of choice. Well, there are, there are some groups who feel that way, who are referring to Mayor Bloomberg as Nanny Bloomberg and have come up with cute little pictures of him in drag to, uh, to illustrate that point. Um, they feel that it is an attack on your personal freedom, that it's telling you what you can and can't buy, it's making health decisions for you. Um, but there are the other side of it, consumer groups, health organizations, city public health departments that love this idea. They feel that it's the best um, possible approach to take to help combat obesity. They right. think that... Um, Which is a, an epidemic in our country? Yeah, the numbers are... are Something like two-thirds of the population is either obese or... Obese or overweight. Excessively overweight. Right, yeah. right. Um, the problem is especially big in kids. People are really worried about, you know, what, what they're drinking, what they're eating, um, the amount of space and time that they have to play, whether it's on a playground or in school. Um, and I read somewhere that soda re, uh, is about 7% of the calories that we consume on a daily basis on average. That's right. And it, it Which doesn't sound thing. like a lot, but isn't that the largest uh, uh, contributor to the calorie count? If you talk to the people who like the idea of the serving size limit on beverages, yes, um, that's exactly why. But the soda industry says. The soda industry says Look, there's everything no, else. We it's offer only 7%. a variety. Exactly, we offer a variety of products to meet all of your your hydration needs. Um, different serving sizes, different products, low calorie, moderate calorie, low sugar, no right. sugar. Um, they're trying to meet your every need at all times. Now there was a uh, a big meeting in Washington recently that you attended. Mm -hmm. where one of the consumer groups, the Center for Science and the Public Interest, was talking about, and actually the, the, the whole forum was put together to counteract uh, soda, to reduce the consumption of soda. It was a pep rally for people who want you to stop drinking your sugar-sweetened beverages, or SSBs as yeah. they call them. Um, they got together with, with people like uh, Mayor Michael Nutter from Philadelphia, who has gotten rid of the sugar-sweetened sugar beverages in all city-owned buildings. Right. Um, and previously tried to get a city tax that's passed. correct. He's, he's tried twice and failed twice. Twice or three times, maybe. Um, I think he's considering a third, okay. uh, a third attempt, but for now he's, he's 0 for 2. Um, they had representatives from other public health um, institutions as well, other city public health boards. Um, they also had the former marketing director for Coke, who was billed, as you know, like the, the, the secret weapon of, of, their, of their conference. He came in and basically said, here's the industry's playbook, use it. Use it to your advantage. Um, if the methods are working for them, why can't they work for you? Right. And he's really encouraging that. He's encouraging them to actually not only steal a page from their playbook, but to draft some of the, the industry officials to work for, for good, so to speak, to work you know, on behalf of broccoli or tap water. I think water. you described him as being um, somewhat wound up, as if he'd been drinking a caffeinated beverage. 
I think there was Red Bull in his veins. Yeah. I do. He <laughs> was, I think so. Uh, he was he was very he was hyper. He was energetic. He was bouncing around the room. He was ready to go. But there was no caffeine other than coffee in the conference for the the day and a half that it went on. Oh, it was kept out of the conference. Oh yeah, it was contraband. As was the soda industry, correct? That's that's right. Um, they were purposely excluded from that day and a half meeting. Wow. Um, okay. Well, I want to talk about another issue. It's okay. a uh, a word that sounds kind of scary. Um, tell me what it means and uh, why the food industry is worked up about it and why consumer groups are worked up about it. I'm talking about hemp. What is hemp and what's, what's it going to do to us? All right. Hemp is the HACCP based inspection models program. It was started as a pilot program in 1999. There are 20 poultry plants and five turkey plants currently operating under this pilot, uh, which accounts for about 15% of the poultry that's available in grocery stores today. So um, we're already eating yeah. chicken that's been made in a hemp plant, most That's likely. correct, that's okay. correct. And what a hemp plant means, what a hemp plant is, um, it means that the federal inspectors are no longer stationed along the processing plants in the same number that they were previously. Um, only one inspector is there as opposed to three or four. Uh, and the checks that the inspectors would be doing are now being done by plant employees. Um, this also allows the plants to run faster line speeds, which the industry loves because faster line speeds means more birds produced every day, which means more profit. Hmm. So what is the reality of hemp? Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it going to be you know, put forth anytime in the future? I mean, we already have the pilot project, but uh, mm -hmm. will it be expanded? If you're the industry, you really want this to be expanded. If you are Jack Kingston, who holds the purse strings for USDA's appropriations, you have been singing its praises for the past few years. If you are consumer groups or the inspectors, you do not want this because you feel that it could put the consumers even more at risk. Right. One of the committee reports recently uh, suggested that uh, USDA get a move on and get this thing done, right? That's correct. The House October sometime. October 1st, the House Appropriations Bill has ordered USDA mm -hmm. to release a final rule by October 1st. Now, we had a little amusing encounter recently with uh, Secretary of Agriculture uh, Tom Vilsack mm -hmm. and his wife Christy Vilsack over this very issue. She came out and said that she didn't like the idea. She did not feel that it was going to keep consumers safe and that she wasn't sure that USDA should move forward on it. Hmm. Um, I don't know how she came to that decision, but it must have been a, a rough night well, in the Vilsack House. My understanding is that she was actually lobbied a bit by the, uh, the union for inspectors. That's right. And also one of the consumer groups. That's right. Food and Water Watch has been vocally opposed to this from even before it was proposed back in January, and they continue to be. Okay. So what's going to happen with him? Is it going to, if, if you had to bet money, if you had to bet your house on this, and I know you don't have a house. So That's right. It's an easy <laughs> bet to make. But uh, if you had to bet money on this, what, what's going to happen with him? Is it going to be expanded? Is it going to be kept where it is? Is it going to be done away with altogether? Seems to be a lot of pressure on both sides of it. Well, there, there's a lot of pressure coming on the agency from, from all sides. I think personally, I don't want to bet a house that I don't have on an issue like this. Um, it, it's, it's really tough to tell. I don't know. Um, I think the industry really wants to go forward. I think Congress, as, as shown in the House Appropriations Bill, really wants this to go forward. Um, but I, I don't know. It's, it's too risky at this point. It could go either way. Hmm. All right. We'll be back soon with another interview. Remember, if you ever have trouble finding the Knife and Fork Show, just go to www.foodchemicalnews.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for showing up, Amber. I'll see you at work tomorrow. <laughs> Mm-hmm.